welcome back. Let's get into the Apostles. Acts. The book of Acts begins with the outpouring of God's Holy Spirit on the followers of Jesus gathered in an upper room in Jerusalem. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly, from heaven, there came a sound like a rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues, as of fire, appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, as the Spirit gave them ability. Acts 2, 1 through 4, NRSV. Both men and women were present for this event. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they had been staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James son of Alphaeus and Simon the Zealot and Judas son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. Acts 1, 13-14, NRSV. According to Peter, this outpouring of the Spirit on Jesus' followers, men and women, was a fulfillment of the prophecy found in the book of Joel that we reviewed in the last chapter. Acts 2, 14-21, and Joel 2, 28 through 32. The men and women who were filled with God's Spirit on the day of Pentecost began to testify about God's deeds of power in the various languages of those who had gathered in Jerusalem for the celebration of Shavuot. Acts 2.11 This celebration commemorated the revelation of the law to God's people through Moses. Just as Moses brought a revelation from God concerning the law, so now Jesus' followers brought a revelation from God concerning the Messiah. Everyone touched by the Holy Spirit that day bore witness, male and female, as the Spirit gave them the ability. Acts 2, 4 and RSV. Though the Holy Spirit of God considered women to be reliable witnesses regarding God's deeds of power, many patriarchal theologians throughout history have not. In the 12th century AD, a monk named Gratian was commissioned by the church to determine the status of women under canon law. Canon law is a code of ecclesiastical laws governing the Catholic Church. Drawing from Roman law and the work of early church fathers, such as Augustine and Jerome, Gratian concluded that a woman alone does not bear the image of God, may not bear witness to the gospel, may not teach, and may not exercise authority in the church. Truly, how is anyone able to explain how a woman, if she is the image of God, remains subject to the rule of males and has no authority? For she is not able to teach or be a witness, much less to rule. We have already seen that women do indeed bear the image of God, see chapter 1, and that they were enabled by God to bear witness to the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Were they also called and empowered by God to teach and to share authority with men in Christian assemblies? Indeed. They were. In the Acts of the Apostles, we find an example of a woman named Priscilla teaching a Jewish man the way of God more accurately. Now there came to Ephesus a Jew named Apollos, a native of Alexandria. He was an eloquent man, well versed in the scriptures. He had been instructed in the way of the Lord, and he spoke with burning enthusiasm and taught accurately the things concerning Jesus, though he knew only the baptism of John. He began to speak boldly in the synagogue, but when Priscilla and Aquila heard him, they took him aside and explained the way of God to him more accurately. And when he wished to cross over to Achaia, the believers encouraged him and wrote to the disciples to welcome him. On his arrival, he greatly helped those who through grace had become believers, for he powerfully refuted the Jews in public, showing by the scriptures that the Messiah is Jesus. Acts 18, 24-28 NRSV 
In the original language of the New Testament, Koine Greek, Priscilla engaged in an activity known as exothento, when she showed Apollos the way of God more accurately. This word is used when someone sets forth, expounds, or explains something. Other New Testament figures who engage in this activity include the Apostles Peter and Paul. Peter engages in extento when he explains to Jewish leaders in the early church step by step why he believes God has now granted salvation and the empowerment of the Holy Spirit to Gentiles. Now the apostles and the believers who were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also accepted the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him saying, Why do you go to uncircumcised men and eat with them? Then Peter began to explain it to them step by step, exetetheto, saying, I was in the city of Joppa praying. And in a trance, I saw a vision. There was something like a large sheet coming down from heaven, being lowered by its four corners. And it also came close to me. And as I looked at it closely, I saw four-footed animals, beasts of prey, reptiles, and birds of the air. I also heard a voice saying to me, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. But I replied, No, by no means, Lord, for nothing profane or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But a second time the voice answered from heaven, What God has made clean, you must not call profane. This happened three times. Then everything was pulled up again to heaven. At that very moment, three men sent to me from Caesarea arrived at the house where we were. The Spirit told me to go with them and not to make a distinction between them and us. These six brothers also accompanied me, and we entered the man's house. He told us how he had seen an angel standing in his house and saying, Send to Joppa and bring Simon, who is called Peter. He will give you a message by which you and your entire household will be saved. And as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell on them, just as it had upon us at the beginning. And I remember the word of the Lord and how he said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave them the same gift that he gave us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could hinder God? When they heard this, they were silenced, and they praised God, saying, Then God has given even to the Gentiles the repentance that leads to life. Acts 11, 1 through 18, and RSV. In this passage, Peter is bearing witness to the work of God. He is also teaching Jewish believers that they must not consider Gentiles to be unworthy of receiving salvation in Christ or the gift of the Holy Spirit. In the Greek language of the New Testament, both Peter and Priscilla engage in the same form of teaching. Men and women both teach and bear witness to the work of God. The Apostle Paul engages at Exothento when he attempts to teach the Jews of Rome that Jesus is the Messiah by referring to the Law of Moses and the Book of the Prophets. When we came into Rome, Paul was not allowed to live by himself with the soldier who was guarding him. Three days later, he called together the local leaders of the Jews. When they had assembled, he said to them, Brothers, Though I have done nothing against our people or the customs of our ancestors, yet I was arrested in Jerusalem and handed over to the Romans. When they examined me, the Romans wanted to release me because there was no reason for the death penalty in my case. But when the Jews objected, I was compelled to appeal to the emperor, even though I had no charge to bring against my nation. For this reason, therefore, I have asked to see you and speak with you, since it is for the sake of the hope of Israel that I am bound with this chain. They replied, We have received no letters from Judea about you, and none of the brothers coming here has reported or spoken anything evil about you. But we would like to hear from you what you think, for with regard to the sect, we know that everywhere it is spoken against. From morning until evening, he explained the matter, exetetheto, 
to them, testifying to the kingdom of God and trying to convince them about Jesus from the law of Moses and from the prophets. Acts 28, 16 through 23, and RSV. Since the apostles Peter and Paul taught exetetheto, people about Jesus, so did too Priscilla teach exetheto to a man the way of God more accurately. Exetetheto and exetheto are two different forms of the same Greek verb. Priscilla is not the only woman we find preaching in the book of Acts. In Acts 21, we find four women identified as daughters of Philip who prophesy. Strong's Concordance provides the following definition for this Greek verb. This one I can't pronounce, so I'll just put it up so you can see. I foretell, prophesy, I set forth matters of divine teaching by special faculty. In the original language of the New Testament, Philip's daughters set forth matters of divine teaching by special faculty. In other words, they taught and proclaimed messages from God. Jesus used the same word when referring to the prophetic ministry of Isaiah. You hypocrites! Isaiah was right when he prophesied a prophetusen about you. These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain. Their teachings are merely human rules. Matthew 15, 7 through 9, NIV. Jesus also used this word in reference to the entire revelation of God set forth in the law and the prophetic books of the Old Testament. For all the prophets and the law prophesied, a prophetesson until John, Matthew 11, 13, NIV. What did Philip's four daughters do? They proclaimed messages from God, engaging in the same spiritual activity as men. In spite of the conclusions of Grecian and the institutional church of this day, the New Testament itself in its original language and context, demonstrates that women may indeed bear witness to the works of God and teach men the way of God more accurately. And there we have it, ladies. Our first example in the works of the apostles in the book of Acts that women taught and prophesied in the same way as men. There may have been few of them, compared to the men, which, because of the culture at that time, would make sense. But now, there is no reason for more women not to preach and teach. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Next week, we will be looking at Romans and Philippians, looking at deacons, ministers, leaders, managers, assistants, all the different roles that women also played a part. So looking forward to that. Please join us again next week.